checked. Yes, Neil, what's happening? It's that time again. <laughs> it is that time. That time for explaining. It's, do, I do some explaining to you do. You got some explaining to do. You know. So any, anything been eating you lately? So here's the thing. Had a little conversation. Somebody said to me, as surely as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, as if to punctuate their point. And I said, well, how sure are you that the sun? <laughs> Okay. Since, since that's the qualifier, how that's sure the qualifier. are you? If, if that is the fact right. th- that is supposed to give credence to some other thing they're telling you. Right. How sure are you? This matters. It does yes. matter. Okay. So this this idea that the sun rises in the east, and I don't know where it came from. It's like broadly true, but it's it's so not true most of the time. Oh. That I'm that I'm surprised it has persisted to this day. Wow, that's a big statement. It's so <laughs> not true most of the time, right? That it shouldn't be considered, you know, an axiom or being considered oh, yeah, like a, a, a verbal canon. A right. verbal it's not, canon. Yeah. yeah, the canon of communication. No, which, I, I, in my opinion, I don't think it should be. Wow. So it turns out there is one place on Earth where the sun always rises exactly due east and sets exactly due west. One place. Well, one, 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 one zone. On Earth's equator, if you live there, mm-hmm. the sun will always rise due east and set due west every day of the year. Gotcha. If you live anywhere north or south of that, all the way up to and down to the Arctic and Antarctic circles, right? You you might remember those from high school geography or elementary school geography. Um, I didn't didn't go to a school that good (laughs) where that was elementary school. That that might've been college for me. Okay, try college. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So if you go up to the Arctic circle, as you move away from the equator, the sun, depending on what time of the year, will rise farther and farther away from due east and set farther and farther away from due west. And what happens when you hit the, the, the Arctic Circle and the, the uh, Antarctic Circle, which, by the way, are 66 and a half degrees north, 66 and a half degrees south, Uh, If you hit those circles and you step across them, there are days of the year where the sun doesn't rise at all because it never set. Right. And there are days the sun never sets because it never rose. Was that the opposite of what I just said? (laughs) The sun sun never rises because it never set. And the sun sun never never sets because it never rose. You said it. it Right. That's- so there are, tw- there, there are days of the year where you have 24 hours of darkness and 24 hours of light. So the sun, basically, when it's all light, 24 hours, the sun just moves its way along the horizon, comes right. around back to the other side. Right. So where, where's east? Where's it's just, west? M- oh, that's so cool, though. It's that's what I'm be- saying. That's yes. what I'm saying. It's so like- whoever, who, whoever came up with the statement, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, did not live in the Arctic. That's so Period. cool. That's like uh, the, the inst- Inuits. Inst- the Inuits did not come up with that saying, right? And and the Antarctic penguins would have never said no, this. No, exactly right. Exactly. Yeah, it's like in Star Wars that there's one planet and it's in a binary star system, and so they they just see you just see both suns all the time. Like you never. I forget the planet they show. Okay, it's it's. Not like that at all, but I enjoy the reference. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not like that at all? Well, because okay, so we don't know whether that planet is tipped on its axis. All this is happening because Earth is tipped on its axis. Right. If we were not tipped on our axis, then the sun would rise due east and set due west for everybody every day of the year. Every time, all the time. But so, we're tipped. Right. So that little twenty-three degrees actually keeps the sun at a place where it looks like it's coming up and down, but really it's the fact that we're tilted. Well, it will come up and down. It's just not going to happen due east due, or due due west. Due east or due west, right. That's all. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Gotcha. That's all I'm saying. And so so the way it works is um, the sun's rising point 
actually migrates across the horizon. Right. And it spends half the year, this is for most of the world's population, okay. who lives between like 20 degrees north and, and 50 degrees north. That's most of the world's population lives in that those bands. It's north and south, by the way. So all the, the big cities of Australia and South America, they're all between like 25 and 50 degrees south latitude. And all the big cities in the north are around there in the north latitude. But here's how it goes. So the sun will spend half its time rising south of due east. And each day, it'll migrate to a different point. So the next day, it'll rise a little closer to due east. And the next day, a little closer. And then one day, it's going to rise due east. One day. Right. One day. One day. Okay. That's it. What, what day is that? That's the first day of spring. Right. Okay. Then... It keeps migrating north. And the day after spring, it rides a little north. It's not due east anymore. And then it keeps rising farther and farther and farther north. By the way, the arc that the sun takes, I might as well throw this in here since we're on the subject, is huge when it rises north of due east because it's on an angle. And that angle goes way across the sky and high. So the sun is in the sky for many, many hours more than half the hours of the day, the sun is up. First day of summer, right? not that long ago. Not that long right? ago. On that day, the sun rose as far north as it ever will on the calendar. Right. And that arc through the sky goes high, and it will set as far north of west as it ever will on the calendar. So you got this arc through the sky. Now watch this. So that arc, after the first day of summer, starts working its way back. And guess what day it crosses due east and due west again? Just take a guess. Um, at at the equinox. At the, the and which equinox am I talking about now? Because uh, it's on its way back. Right. So it's the wait. What? Which one is vernal? Because it's the <laughs> <laughs> which one is vernal? <laughs> vernal is spring. Yeah. So it's, it's the other one. <laughs> the other one. Thank it's the other know. one. <laughs> uh, so if you're when it's out, just call it the September equinox, right? right. The, otherwise, the autumnal equinox. The autumnal for, equinox. If I'm trying to be globally inclusive, I'll just say the September equinox because it's not autumn in the southern hemisphere. Their seasons are reversed for all these same reasons. So the sun sets; it will rise due east, set due west on September 21st, thereabouts, and keeps going. So watch what happens: it keeps rising farther and farther south, but its angle is now lower and lower in the sky. And so it's not up for very long. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then it gets really, really low. And the really ancients low. were freaking out. All right. The They're ancients. Like, the sun is dying. The, the sun, when, one day the sun is going to be such a low. It's just arc. going to be so low. It's going to disappear. It's, it's going to disappear. The earth has eaten the sun. I thought the horizon has eaten the sun. Right. So, so when is the lowest arc? Uh, that's the that's first winter, day of winter solstice. Right. The winter solstice, December 21st. Right. Now, if you are the ancient people and you worship the sun and you want to make sure it doesn't keep going, you sort of chant and pray and you do whatever you do to make sure the sun doesn't keep dipping down below the horizon. But what you notice is that the sun's movement, the arc of the sun each day, slows down and it stops. It doesn't keep getting lower. The sun stops. Not literally in the sky. The arc of the sun of the stops sun. getting lower. And then starts back up again. What is Latin for sun? Um, I'm going to say soul. 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 <laughs> the sun's got some soul. Soul. <laughs> what is Latin for stop? Uh, I'm going to say cut it out. No, I don't know. I don't know. Latin, Latin for stop, stop is stis. Stis. Sun stop. Solstice. Solstice. That, and remember the armistice? The right. stopping of the armistice. No, remember. The, no, no, You're not right. 130 years old. No, I don't remember it. No, but yeah. <laughs> so armistice. Oh, man, that is amazing. Solstice. Hey, so I'm Don Cornelius, and I just want to let you know, man, this was a stone gas. Join us next time on the Solstice. <laughs> okay, for everyone older than 60, that one. <laughs> Come on, man. Everybody knows Soul Train is still on TV. Chuck is into period jokes. <laughs> hey, man, look at this afro I am wearing. Come on. That is that, you know, people have been talking about your hair. Look when at you, this when you wear afro you I'm wearing. You know what they say about your hair like that? You know what uh -uh. they say? No. They say, 
it looks like a Lego piece that attached to your head. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so sharp. Yeah, it's so sharp. So it... See, my hairline is all raggedy and gray and stuff and, and thinning. <laughs> Yours is like, bang, click, click. click. And, and put some hair and chuck hair on. And, and let's, don't ever show us your closet because you could have other. <laughs> oh, man. So chuck I can have said... other Lego attachments to yeah, the hole in his head. So all I was saying was that the, the solstice once you realize, okay, it's still not good enough just to stop because our props depend on you. So what do you want it to do? What are you trying to get the sun to do? You don't want it to just stop there. No, you that, want it to go back up and, and become victorious. It takes a few days to realize that the sun has stopped and now it's on its way back. And this became the foundation of many, many celebrations right. um, around the world. Saturnalia. And, Saturnalia among them, and when the uncertain date, the uncertain day of the year for the birth of Jesus was going to be put onto the calendar, the Christians said, the Catholic Church said, let's put Christmas when people are already celebrating. That way it'll be an easy conversion for them. It'll help them. We'll okay? co-op. We we'll co-op co we'll co co we'll co co their, their celebration. And that's why December, that's why uh, Christmas is that in that time of year, December 25th. Exactly. Um, so the solstice also occurs with the north, of course, because there are two solstices in a year. The sun doesn't keep going north. It goes very far north. We have very long days, and then it comes out. So, so there you have it. And by the way, it's and the farther away you are from the equator, the wider is the range of places over which the sun rises and sets. Okay. It's huge. It's just huge. That's so cool. Yeah. And so whoever says sun rising east and sets in the west. As surely yeah. as the sun rises in the east <laughs> and sets in the west. And now I can say, well, you're not that sure then, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're yeah. not. The, I guess you're not that sure. <laughs> Cle guess, clearly, you're not at the Arctic Circle. Clearly. Clearly, your your premise does not work at the Arctic Circle, sir. And what's really cool, when you're on the poles, okay, the sun rises everywhere. Okay, so, so when you're on the pole, the sun just slowly begins to appear, but it's always just doing circles around you. That's wild. And, and those circles, it's like a, like a helix, like a spiral. The circles just kind of rise up. Oh. Uh. Oh, that's so As the cool. Sun goes, right, right. That's right. And, and then, then it just goes back. back down, and then it goes below the horizon. Right. But what it means is there, there are months at a time where you have highly sustained twilight. Because there's a point where the sun is just its own diameter below the horizon, two and right. it just stays there as the sun goes completely around. That's so cool. So that's just, I just want to put that one to rest, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It just doesn't. And that's why Manhattan Henge that day of the year where the sun rises perfectly aligned with the street grid of Manhattan, that doesn't happen every day of the year because the sunrise point is changing. And it doesn't happen on the equinoxes because the Manhattan grid is not perfectly aligned east-west. Gotcha. So it's rotated 29 degrees from the grid. And so you can do the math and you look it up and you figure it out. And this is what I first did 20 years ago. And I figured out here's the day where the sun is gonna set or, or rise exactly on the grid, and then you have Manhattan Hinge. That's that. super cool. Well, there you, there have, you have it. it. I love it. I love it. All right, Chuck, another explainer in the can. That's right. And now we know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever say, as sure as the sun rises in the east, it means you're not sure. It means you're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Period. All right, Chuck. All right, buddy. Here. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, bidding you. <laughs>